but we are very excited to have everybody here today. Um, and thank you for joining us. I'm Amanda Smond. I'll be your host for today on behalf of Jeffrey Court. Um, and um, as before we jump in and get started, um, I do want to um, let everyone know we will do our best to try and stick within um, our 40, 45 minute time frame. We'll do a Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in your chat box um, and we'll be sure to answer as many of them as we can. Um, and um, you feel free to add them as we go if that is also helpful. Um, and we'll try to get through those. Um, so I want to start by introducing um, our wonderful panelists um, who are here to give us some of their expert advice um, from a wide range of um, roles throughout the industry. Um, so first we have Catherine Given, who is the Senior Style and Market Editor at Lux Magazine. She covers all of their design markets, um, loves to keep up with um, the evolving and forward thinking industry that is the design industry um, and finding uh, new and unique products to shine a light on to give them a voice in the magazine, which we so much love. I happen to have my favorite editions behind me. I've been scrolling through all of the different cities that you guys have. So um, thanks for all your hard work on that. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, and then we also have um, Barb Schmidt, who is the principal at Studio B Style, um, which is a commercial and residential design and photography firm who's um, designed thousands of kitchens and baths um, for all the major um, interior brands like KitchenAid, Kohler, and Sub-Zero Wolf. So thank you for joining us today, Barb. Really great to be here. Thank you. We also have Katie Kath, who some may be familiar with um, from our previous webinar that we hosted. Um, she is the um, co-owner and lead designer at J. Kath Design, Build, and Reinvent. Uh, they're an award-winning design um, and build firm headquartered in the Midwest. Um, but they serve clients all over the country and they're known for their high-end designs, attention to detail, and their in-house custom cabinetry offerings. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be back. Um, and then we have Tammy Rafferty. Um, she is our Midwest sales manager at Jeffrey Court. Um, she has over 20 years of experience in the industry and her expertise is in wholesale distribution of specialty and luxury tile lines. So thank you for joining us, Tammy. Thank you, Amanda. Looking forward to it. I'm very excited to have everybody here. Um, today we are talking about bringing a new perspective to the design industry um, in these uncertain times and really how to um, as we kind of pass to the new normal and re-enter into what that new normal is. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off. Um, with all of these shifts and everything, how have each of you been able to uh, shifts in going digital, I should be specific in that. Um, have you been able to kind of maintain and build that trust with your audience within the industry? So Tammy, I don't know if you want to go ahead and kick us off with that. Sure, sure. Um, I think initially um, when everything went on lockdown, um, we felt it really important to reach out to our customers. Um, the tile showrooms, there's varying degrees of customers that we have, whether it be a large distributor to um, a smaller kitchen and bath dealer to a builder design center, um, and just reach out and make sure that um, they knew that we were still in operation, considered as an essential, and um, that we were there for them. And, um, you know, to make sure that we started to uh, build that connection in more of a digital way. Um, we also did some some videos for product training that they could share with their clientele. Um, certainly um, doing some of the webinars like we did last with you and with Katie, um, you know, promoting that type of thing to, to keep people feeling really well connected during this time. Um, as things have started to open up a little bit, um, we've been trying to be very mindful of 
each state, each county um, has different requirements in those uh, openings and how that's to look. So we've been really wanting to put ourselves out there to say we will come during times that um, have the least amount of traffic. They have limited amount of opportunities that they can see designers and customers now in their showrooms. So we're trying to pick those off peak times if we're coming in to do sample updates and so forth. And just being mindful that everybody's in a different place um, in this whole pandemic and the reopening of the country and um, just not putting everybody in the same box and trying to adapt to whatever's going to work best for their forum. Yeah, I think that's great. Definitely being a resource during this time is very important in helping to build and maintain that trust as we kind of all navigate through this new normal. Barb, Absolutely. Oh, sorry. We, uh, we developed, um, we actually have got Slack channels for all of our clients. Now each client has a Slack channel. We work with companies all over the world so we've always been digital but just with the with the people staying at home more it seems like we're all more vulnerable so we've been online a lot more than we were in the past so we just decided to develop a slack channel so that we can actually work side by side um, live which we weren't doing nearly as much of but we're developing designs and content day to day um, even even more closely than we were before. And it's been really successful. So I think this may be the new norm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Catherine, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, sort of the only good news is that we're all in this together, right? Like we're all navigating this time, this, you know, unchartered pandemic, post-pandemic territory for the first time and sort of seeing what works digitally and what doesn't. Um, but everyone really has to become more comfortable operating digitally simply because it's the only option in many cases. Um, you know, I'm in New York, nothing's open. It might not be for a very long time. So, you know, when I say operating digitally, it's really everything from you know, making big ticket purchases to hiring designers and employees to, you know, how we consume media and, and how we're getting our information. Everything is kind of evolving quickly, but, you know, I can sort of speak from a Lux perspective. Um, and, you know, when it comes to trust, we just want to make sure everything we're putting out is very much on brand for us. Um, you know, we want to make sure that that Lux quality is still there and, you know, our readers, our designers, our partners are, are still seeing all of that beauty. Um, and, you know, we're putting together so much digital content these days. And, you know, we're really, really thinking hard about what we're doing. Um, we have this new design TV on, on Sandow's um, Facebook live page and our IGTV. You know, I, I would love it if everyone could check it out. There's, there's a ton of fun content. But, you know, when it comes to trust, I really think as long as you're, you're being true to your brand, you're being true to yourself, um, you're really going to keep and build the trust of, of your clients and uh, your partners. Yeah. <clears throat> I can add a few notes too. I mean, we've, we've been talking about trust for a long time I and mean, we're in the business of um, often being one of three or more uh, contractors on the scene, giving one of many bids um, to a client. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's who they trust. It's who they trust in their home, who they trust um, with a large purchases, uh, major decisions, which for many people, this is, these are the biggest decisions they've made, likely since they purchased the home they're in. Um, so we are, I think the Andy has just been upped for us. I mean, we're communicating in a different way, a little bit less in person, um, but we are opening a little bit more um, here than perhaps in New York. So we are um, starting to re-engage with people in person, but um, similar to what Barb said too, I mean, we love Slack where we've implemented a whole host of um, tech tools that have really helped us. And I think some of those are definitely here to stay. And um, communication, we've just from day one had to reach out to our current client list and then projects we're getting ready to kick off now, just communicating that we're here. Um, we're answering questions in a timely manner. We're, 
We, um, as Patty would know, we can't get samples in our hands quick enough right now. We just kind of keep, keep ordering. We have a lot of things going out the door right now. Um, so that's really exciting too. Um, but yeah, so communication and just continuing to um, show up when we, when we say we will and remaining true to our brand as well and using that authentic voice that we've, um, that really helped us get where we are. Yeah, I think all of those are really valid and very important points to make of, you know, staying true to who you are, developing that kinds of content, being a resource, um, and making sure that you're communicating constantly and effectively, especially with how quickly news uh, shifts and changes and things are updated and re-updated. So um, I think all very great in helping to build and maintain that trust that I think everyone has come to know and love about um, the industry and working with um, each of you individually as you have your um, separate roles within it, but that they all come together at some point. So I think that's all really important. Um, what are some of the opportunities that you guys have seen um, that can be leveraged for business now and in the long term that can really help with uh, within the industry. Isn't everybody on their phone right now? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so having mobile content, I mean, if not now, when? I mean, this is the greatest time of all to have mobile content, if you can. I know that's a big chunk to bite off, but we oftentimes tell our clients to choose one social platform and go after it and be consistent and get that under your belt before you try to do them all at once. Yeah, I think that's valid. I know Katie, you touched on last in the webinar and have like since updated a lot of um, things that you have done in shifting your business within the industry to really continue not only to be a resource, but um, developing those business opportunities and how that you're, um, not just looking for right now, but also focusing on what that looks like, you know, after things really open up, um, hopefully for the long term as well. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we um, are really, I don't know, we're really thankful for the work that we've put in to date on our social platform, um, or the, even just our website as well, um, and the blog. Um, we think that that's really made a difference in the momentum that we've been able to hang on to during this time and, you know, our, that our leads are still coming in for new client work. Um, so that just cements that what we've been doing, all of those early mornings or I'm putting out that Instagram post. <laughs> Sometimes it could take five minutes and some days I'm like, if I've been staring at this for half an hour, um, it's worth it. It's, it's, you know, really just putting out our brand and the voice that we want to remain true um, to, but I'll back up what Barb just said. I mean, pick your platform and own it. And the one thing that we are all doing right now is spending an excess amount of time on our devices. Um, and, and maybe for the better, we're, we're getting inspired, we're staying connected differently, and that's okay too. Um, so this now is the time to, to get out there and connect and find community in a way that you hadn't done before. Yeah, I think that's a really good um, point that you make. I know um, the VP for um, Jeffrey Core actually made a really good point of saying, you know, this is our tribe and you have to protect them and focus on them and really act as kind of one unit and family. And that's really through a lot of this together and how that has positive impacts um, for the long term, I think for everybody um, in the industry for sure. Um, does anyone else want to add to that? Well, I'll yeah, back or off of that. Uh, Pammy, Tammy, sorry to interrupt you. Right. But, you know, as Barb and Katie were saying, we're just constantly on our phones now, right? And there's so much content kind of being thrown at us. And, you know, what I think people are observing is there's a lot of businesses with really successful, dynamic, beautiful digital platforms. You know, Jeffrey Court is certainly one of them. And there's a lot that are not. And, you know, coming from editorial, aesthetics is important. So, um, it, 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 you know, it totally impacts your experience. So this might be a good time to sort of look at um, what you're doing digitally, maybe invest in it, um, maybe update it, just so, you know, you're making sure everyone does have that really beautiful, seamless, um, sort of successful digital experience, you know, on your, on your platforms. Yeah, I think that's we, a really we've good. We've been wanting to also um, 
assist in that way um, in, as far as sampling goes. You know, we want to be able to have a website that is really easy to use, that you can access samples, get them out quickly. It helps support our dealer business so that, um, you know, that the time frame for which samples get to the end user is much faster and it doesn't come at the expense of that distributor or dealer at this time. Um, we've done some strategic um, um, partnerships with Material Bank that has also helped with getting samples out real time to the design community. Um, really happy that our website too is one that works on all different types of platforms really seamlessly. If you're on an iPad, if you're on um, a smartphone, or certainly if you're on your laptop, um, these things do become really important. Um, in addition to that, we've been um, trying to close that gap and, and really going out and trying to um, diligently follow the design community and look at the work they're doing and promote that work um, on some of our social media sites as well, just to, to continue to support all that people are doing during these times that looks very different than what we were doing just a couple months ago. Yeah, I think that's all really valid points um, in that, you know, being able to invest in things, um, not just for right now, but really to help all the way through. We are a very uh, aesthetically photo driven industry, you know, everything well, it can be tangible, really the way that you can share that um, with folks is through um, the photos and the videos and um, just being more visual. So definitely investing in that. Um, now is something that will always help or even just refreshing what it is that you already do and giving that new take on it. Um, I think that, and forgive me, I don't know if you um, at, or if Sanda has done this longer than COVID, but with a lot of the webinars, I've, I know I've um, sat in on quite a few of them. They're really informative and great. Um, is that something you had generated because we are all forced to go more digital and keep that offering going or is that something um, yes, a lot of the new content was really in reaction to sort of what we're going through right now. And as we keep talking about, we're just sitting in front of our computers, sitting in front of our phones, and that's really how we're getting a lot of information. And um, as I mentioned, Sandow launched Design TV. Please check it out. There's tons of, you know, amazing programming. But, you know, the the good thing about this is that there's been so much more industry news, you know, product launches, trade information, webinars that are obviously out there. And I really feel like all of this is so much more easily accessible than it really ever has been. You know, during this time, I'm usually traveling, we all are traveling to Salone and ADAC and Vegas and High Point. And now all of that information is, you know, sort of coming coming through digitally and it's um, much more readily accessible. So, you know, it does make you rethink sort of how we're going to be operating moving forward. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, and I know Katie mentioned that, um, you know, you, during this time, a lot of the opportunity isn't even just um, in like the content you're creating, but even in the design and changing things up and bringing just that new creative energy to the client work that you're doing. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, people that are anxious to jump into renovation projects, but that might not be feasible right now. So we um, have really put a, a greater focus on the design only service that we're offering. Uh, so that lends itself to work out, of course, outside of our community, but then even within our own community, we have uh, about four different clients that we're working with on rather large scale projects that'll start um, probably later this year. We're scheduled to, but we're kind of keep, we're just keeping an eye on what happens this fall because we just don't really know. Um, but that's great. We've always wanted our firm to look like this. We want to do the design work now so that when we start the build, um, it's much more turnkey and things don't always work out that beautifully. People buy homes, they want to close, they want it remodeled, they want to move in 90 days later, whatever that time frame might look like. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to react in those scenarios too, but if in an ideal case where we can have the time to plan um, and make really sound decisions um, without a rush, it's better for everybody in the end too. So we're excited to be able to do that with um, a handful of clients right now. 
yeah, I think that's really great. Just taking a, a new take on um, different design elements everyone may have been doing one way that shifting and doing them differently now really like brings that new perspective to things. Um, I know that we've kind of talked a lot about, you know, some of the opportunities and have helping folks navigate um, the changes within the design industry and kind of what that looks like. What are some of the things, um, and I'll start with Barb, because I know you made a really good point uh, on this about, um, you know, how do we navigate these changes and bring that new perspective to really help aid in success, not just right now, but just for the long term. You know, a lot of these things that we're shifting to implement now are things that will last um, for probably forever more now at this point. Um, but I want to make sure that we touch on um, something that you mentioned about really connecting and doing a lot of cross promotion and things, if you want to elaborate more on that. Right, especially for, um, so almost everyone we work with, it's very a collaborative situation. And I'm, and I'm thinking of Katie too, because she has to source all these different materials to put into a home, right? Um, well, all those brands can be cross promoting each other. So that's just a simple answer to a lot of the content that we create now. Sometimes we're in real homes. I'm doing a real home remodel out on Lake Minnetonka right now which Jeffrey Court is a part of, actually. Um, we've replaced two backsplashes there, and actually the master suite is all Jeffrey Court, and there will be photos coming soon. Um, but, I, you know, every, everybody has to help each other, and we've always been a collaborative company. Studio B Style has been around for 25 years. We've always been, you know, striving to bring together brands because they can't do it by themselves, and it's gotten more... showrooms too what is the whole story just looking at it in a different way you're not alone and there are other companies that are non-competitive that would love to work with you as well it's a, it's a nice way to think about it and perhaps a bit refreshing instead of i'm by myself <laughs> and the lone wolf out there yeah, yeah, we're definitely in this all together. So I think that um, are really good points that you make on, um, you know, really being collaborative and connecting to each other. Um, you know, it's, this isn't really the time uh, necessarily for our typical sales cycle for any brand. It's more about the people and the relationship. And part of that are the people at the brands. Um, I know a lot of times they can be seemingly faceless and it's more like a logo as um, kind of that, but I think it, there's been a really big shift um, in having the people behind the brands really come to the forefront um, because, you know, you can only build trust and help really be in this together as humans first. Um, so I think that it's really great to see how everyone's shifted and made that um, ebb and flow and really work together um, in order to keep um, not just design going, but like your spirits and really wanting to get out there and keep things going, um, I think is a really big part of it as well. Um, I know that um, there's, um, there's one um, thing I definitely want to make sure we touch on and we'll start taking questions um, in just a few minutes after this. So if you want to submit your questions now is a great time to do that. We'll make sure that we can get to as many of them as we can. Um, you know, each of your respective roles, so this is for everyone, um, how have you seen the design community really come together? And like, what have been some of those impacts that you've seen um, in what they're doing or how they're doing things differently and how they've really come together as all we mentioned all in together. So what are some of those ways that you've seen um, that? I think just doing this has been a really great example. All of the webinars, everyone coming together. I can't imagine any other scenario where <clears throat> the five of us would be together sharing insight and just best practices, how, um, what's working for us, what, you know, I even love when the conversation turns to what's not working. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what should we be doing more of? What should we be doing less of? Because there's a, a, a really rich conversation to be had about that too. 
Um, but I just think this platform and, and Instagram, I know some people are exhausted um, hearing and talking about Instagram. Um, that must be one of the fastest growing platforms out there right now. Mm -hmm. And in, you know, back to Barb's point about connecting with brands, it's such a great and efficient tool just to send a DM, even to magazines or editors or brands or, hey, you know, can I grab some samples of this? Or yeah, do you want to work with me on this project? We're shooting for this publication or we're partnered with Jeffrey Court. We've been able to get so many things accomplished efficiently um, when the brand can just, you know, tap over to our feed and um, feel like there might be a reason to collaborate. We might have a similar aesthetic or, um, you know, back to the earlier point of uh, what is your aesthetic? What does your photography look like? Have we made, you know, we've made that investment. Um, although if you go all the way back to like when we first jumped on Instagram, you, know, you might look at why is my husband wearing neon yellow t-shirts first? <laughs> we had to rebrand the uniform too. Um, but yeah, so that would be my answer to that question. Those neon colored shirts might need to make a comeback just for fun <laughs> as your little throwback. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> I think for us at Jeffrey Court, um, we've been really striving to help the design community on the sourcing side. Um, there's been um, quite a few, uh, quite a few hiccups in the supply chain, I would say. And Jeffrey Court has made an enormous investment in inventory. I think at any given time, we're running at like a 98% fill rate. Um, so when people are running into those issues of um, ready to start this project and now there's not the materials available. We've been really quick to step in and help them um, access what we have that might be similar, um, be able to get samples out readily, um, and just make sure that they know that, you know, up front we made a tremendous amount of investment to make sure that, that we're there to support their business through good times and trying times. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can really just echo what, um, you know, Katie and Tammy were saying in that, you know, the design community really supports each other. That's, that's why I love being in this industry. It's been really inspiring just to see the ways that people have been giving back, you know, everything from building masks, you know, and sewing masks to seeing designers donate their time and their energy. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see. And as they were saying, hopefully, you know, discussions like this that allow us to help each other out and start, you know, the conversation about what else we can do, um, you know, really continues into the future. Because I think that, you know, that's one good thing that's, that's really come out of this. Yeah. Uh, Barb, do you want to add anything? I know you kind of answered this a little bit already. Well, I just feel like, um, there's a lot of groups out there on LinkedIn and Facebook, and they're really active right now, especially in the design It's really exciting because I'm able to talk to some designers I never would normally, like, like what Katie said. I mean, we're all together today, and that's, it's, it's really exciting and inspiring. So that is a silver lining to us all being focused here like this. It's, it's great. It's been great. That part of it has been really wonderful. Yeah, I think that um, is really something that's exciting about this time is that, you know, we are each other's captive audience, right? There's um, through LinkedIn and Facebook groups, really being able to connect with um, different people throughout the industry. Um, and networking, digital networking, I, I think that they're coining a new term with that, um, is more important now than it was even ever before um, and really helping to keep those connections last um, for the foreseeable future um, in connecting with folks and really having um, kind of purpose-driven um, community and everyone swapping stories and tips and tricks and supportive I think something um, that people have a little bit more time. I know that we're not all just sitting at home doing nothing. So I don't want to say we have all the time in the world because I know we're, we're all definitely still busy and working. But um, I think being able to find kind of 
um, your tribe even within the design industry and really collaborate together um, on a variety of different projects and things that may come up in the future. And when we are all able to come back together in person, uh, it'll make it just that much more special and better. And um, I think that the projects that will come out of all of this um, through those connections and things um, is really exciting to think about. And I can't wait to see what all of those will look like. I love all of the beautiful spaces everyone um, has been sharing and um, it's been very exciting to see that. Um, I think I might have to enlist everyone's help on this to start um, redecorating and renovating because um, much like all of America, we're all probably very sick of our spaces. Um, so <laughs> don't be surprised if you start getting calls from audience members today uh, to help with renovating some spaces and really making their home vastly different than what we when we very first started out in all of this. Uh, but as we kind of um, close things out, um, I want to open it up if you guys have any advice um, to anyone in the audience um, as to um, different things that um, you've seen change or things that might be helpful that um, they may not be thinking about doing, uh, whether it's both design, business, or um, and how they're kind of approaching this and what that, this new perspective really looks like to help keep them encouraged. Well, just outside of, you know, just the normal day-to-day -day operations and business, um, when, when this whole pandemic started and we all, you know, were working from home, our leadership came to us that were out in um, various regions of the country and asked specifically, what is it that your community needs? You know, what is it outside of tile? What do they need? And so it was really great to see that, you know, we were participating in local food banks. We were looking at areas where we could bring in lunch for first responders and support maybe um, one of our distributors or dealers that had that connection locally that needed that additional support. So really trying to figure out um, ways that we can um, continue to support a community as well as um, you know, bonding together and creating that trust beyond just our, our, our work re relationships. So that's been something I've been really encouraged to see, um, see going on within our organization and other organizations that we work with. Yeah, I can say, you know, when when Lux started doing a lot more digital programming, I have to say I was I was sweating a little bit because it, it wasn't my regular MO, but I've had so much fun with a lot of the programming that we've been able to do. We've been able to think outside of the box and get super creative. And, you know, I sort of have shifted my perspective and it's it's been really really fun so what i can say is you know this might be an opportunity to to try something new and if you fail you fail but you know it's it's the time to sort of think outside of the box and, and maybe push yourself creatively to to do something that you didn't think you could yeah i think that's um really great advice um and i think you know starting is progress you know i think that it's very easy to overthink things and kind of like Katie mentioned with their social posts, like sometimes it's a really quick and easy thing. And sometimes she realizes she's been on there for 30 minutes thinking, gosh, have I really taken this long to, <laughs> to send this post? And I think a lot of um, folks, especially if um, they feel like they're maybe like too small or that they don't need to be doing this or whatnot, I think just showing up for your audience and trying and being there is a really great place to start. I mean, starting is, um, I'm sure, challenging, but I think right now people are looking for really just that authenticity because we are all in this together and it's okay. You know, we don't have to pretend like everything's okay all the time. I think if you're there showing up, um, that that is really what counts, um, especially in times like these. Um, and I think just being more real and honest, you know, I can be honest and really sick of looking at the decor. At my head. I, I would add too, if you are um, in a position. Um, where and I think others are, have their own little 
Oh, go ahead. I think it like skipped a little bit. We can hear you. Who? Me? Yeah, Katie. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> Um, I would say if you are putting content out for an audience, um, you know, in any different format, I wouldn't get caught up, especially if you're just getting started in the volume of people that are paying attention. Um, I've uh, led quite a few webinars just on the marketing piece. Um, and, you know, a lot of people get hung up on, well, what, you know, where do I get started? And I think I missed my opportunity and I just can't get more than 500 followers. 500 followers that's like a couple wedding receptions. That's a very captive audience. And the bigger your audience gets, you know, I don't, I don't know all the algorithms for certain to say this, but the larger your audience gets, the percentage of people you're actually reaching goes down. Um, and so to be able to have a, to be a micro influencer, I have a very small audience. There's still a lot of power in that too. And just go deep, not wide, you know, take time to engage with your audience, respond to their comments. If they ask a question, answer the question. You might not be able to do that all day, every day. Um, but I think if you are in a position to put content out there, part of your obligation is um, to follow it through, to be a re to continue to be a resource to your audience, um, to engage appropriately. And you're, you're giving them content and they're, the fact that they're taking time to respond to you, that's helping with your algorithms and that's sort of the name of the game and you wanna be a resource um, to reciprocate back. So. Um, don't get hung up on the likes. I would spend more time on the one or two people that are really interested in what you put out there um, and are truly are a, a fan and following you because they really love that one image that you put out there. Yeah, that's definitely really great um, advice. It's not, um, I always say that it, um, and I think I've mentioned this to the group before, but um, it is social media and Instagram is not about collecting people. It's about connecting with them and being genuine in, in that connection because, um, you know, they are humans on the other side of that like or comment or whatever it is, um, however it is that they may be engaging. And, um, and I think that is the lifeblood of any business um, are the people um, that are part of it and the people that they are connecting with. So always very important to um, respond and be open and, and take that time. Um, and if you're worried about how much time you're spending, you can, uh, on social, you can put limits to it as friendly reminders for screen time. Although um, I would definitely, um, if you're worried about starting, like Katie mentioned, um, stories are a great place to start. If you're worried that it will last too long in your feed, in 24 hours it's gone and you can kind of get the nerves out of your system to kind of help get you started. Um, I know, Barb, you do a lot in this. Do you have um, any advice to our audience as we kind of close things out um, at the top of our time? As, as far as your how you look visually out to your audience, I mean, it's super important. I. I can't say enough about having good photography and presenting yourself in a very polished way if you can. I know that sounds scary, but honestly, we have the greatest cameras in our phones now. <laughs> and we can, you can shoot your own stuff if you just take maybe an hour or two to learn how to do it. I mean, you don't, we, of course, we we have professional photographers, but there's a lot of stuff. And and Haley, my assistant, I mean, we shoot a lot of stories ourselves. But it, it's great to put it out there instantly if you can. Yeah, um, I think um, we have a question, and there's another one I'd like to ask um, Catherine as well after this. Um, what advice can you share on the types of content that work best for audiences within this industry? I, mean, I can talk a little bit about that. Obviously, Lux is a print magazine, but um, you know we have an amazing audience and connection all over all over the world, all over the country. But um, what we've been doing digitally and experimenting with that—it's funny, shorter, more focused um, segments 
resonate more and obviously get more eyeballs. I like to joke, like we don't have the, you know, we have the attention span of a toddler when you're on your phone, you know, um, something like this is great because you plan it, you sit down, it's very informative. But if you're trying to be on social, I would recommend doing things that are fun and quick because um, people's extension, attention span um, doesn't last that long. Yeah, and we always, you know, yeah, think definitely. I think that is um, also. Go ahead. I think there's a delay between the two of us, Katie. But <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> I, I was just going to add, we we treat our analytics on social media just like we do with forecasting and budgeting. I mean, we have to sit down every quarter and we look back at what worked really well for us. Um, doesn't mean that we won't do other things and weave in things that are creatively inspiring for us, but we know a full view of a kitchen will always outperform a detailed image of just, you know, a range and hood and backsplash. Doesn't mean we won't do the other pretty things, but, um, you know, we know what we know what performs better. I agree with you, Katie. Room shots are the number one. And before afters, I've, I've worked in editorial a long, long time myself. And before afters have always been the top selling situation. The editors have always wanted those. So, and full rooms. And, you know, you spend the most money on your kitchen. So, that's the most expensive room in the house. And then your master bath. So, of course, people are really interested in doing a lot of homework on kitchens. I think those are all really valid points. Um, I think something to piggyback off of, you know, what do you do? What else can you do with all of the beautiful content you create from projects um, that you've worked on? And I think, um, you know, Catherine, on your end as being on the publishing side, how best can people, because I know everyone on this are creators and designers or working in some aspect of this industry, what are some of the best ways for them to be able to share that content in terms of like publishing and um, maybe getting featured, whether it's digitally or in print? Well, you know, I can't echo Barb's sentiment enough. Um, aesthetics are important and so is photography. Um, you know, we are, we are looking for images that are beautiful and that are inspiring and that really starts with not only the design, but how that's presented. And I think investing in that is so, so important. Um, you know, I, I'm not an Instagram guru, but I have gotten a few quick, like, you know, foot photography 101 classes and it totally makes a difference. Um, but yeah, in terms of, of getting published, I would just be investing in photography and it's so much easier on the editorial side when you see those beautiful shots. Um, it just, you're doing yourself a disservice, I think, um, you know, in terms of your design, if you're not photographing it beautifully. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually have a question for Katie though, just because, you know, during all of this, I have been talking to a lot of interior designers who have been doing Zoom installs. And it's been going, I think, pretty, it's been pretty successful. And I'm just curious, is that something you would do? Or is that like, could that be the future of design in some instances? Obviously, it would free up, you know, time, travel, and money. So I'm just curious what your take on that is. Oh, are you on mute? Looks yeah, like he's on mute. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. I've been trying to unmute myself and it won't let me. Okay. Um, we, we haven't done one. It sounds really fun. Um, we recently did a video. Uh, we had a videographer um, recording us do an install, which was just for play, just to see how that would um, roll out and um, mostly just to see kind of how that performs on our social too. Um, and it was really fun. It was 60 seconds. It captured probably several hours of content down into 60 seconds. We just, you know, had that time cap on there for the intent of social um, and attention span, right? People don't watch, <laughs> don't watch a whole lot beyond that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, that sounds, um, it sounds entertaining. I think if we're going to continue to live in this space, we probably need to get creative outside of the conversation um, and actually show people to get something done. 
yeah, I think that can definitely be an interesting added, um, not just in terms of content, but added service to be able to help folks do it, especially if they're more apprehensive about having others in their homes. I know we've touched a lot about how um, the precautions and things everyone has taken as they go, whether it's visiting a client in their home or meeting for the first time, or if you're working with a dealer or showroom and what that looks like and how everyone's adjusted. So um, I think it's also important to have that perspective on the client side and if what their comfort levels are and how that all works. So um, very, very different to see, um, you know, photography, things are captured through the lens of that person who's behind the camera, even if it's your iPhone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, your client's perspective on their new spaces um, and how they kind of translate that onto film too with Zoom installs. I think that can be really exciting to see. I'm definitely interested in seeing how that works out. So if anyone does end up doing it, um, be sure to follow up for sure. Um, well, we're going to um, wrap it up. I know that um, we are at time. So I wanna thank you all for joining us um, and for everyone who has um, participated in this call. Thank you to all of our panelists. Um, I think it's been very informative and great to have you all on and offer your four different perspectives on really what's happening in the industry, how it's changing, and all the exciting things we can look forward to, um, and all the beautiful spaces everyone creates. We can't wait to see those. So thank you all. I hope you have a great weekend and stay safe.